the Sutra of Karma, the Law of the Teacher. Finding our teacher. Once you've learned, he will pass you on to another teacher. How is a triple fish soup prepared? You cook one fish, remove it, then put another in the same broth, remove it and repeat this process three times. As a result, the soup becomes very concentrated. Something similar happens with the accumulation of knowledge, skills, and technologies. One person accumulates them and passes them on to another. What a teacher achieves by the age of 70, his student may already have at 20, and he moves forward. This is the principle on which all academic schools are built. But besides the linear transmission of knowledge, there is something else the environment itself contributes to rapid progress. I grew up in Novosibirsk, in Akademgorodok, in a forest on the shore of the OBC. Nature, hares, squirrels. Bicycle paths, which Moscow has only recently embraced, were already there in the 1960s. People first tread convenient paths, and then they were paved. Academician A. M. Budka or would ride to work on a donkey, and it didn't seem eccentric but quite natural. Professors there would achieve tenure faster than they obtained apartments, so many luminaries lived with their students in dormitories. It was Budka or who introduced the system of round tables, where every graduate student could voice their thoughts. Thanks to this, Alexander Skrinsky became an academician at 34 Academ Gorodok gave him the opportunity to be heard. This entire atmosphere was not only pleasant and democratic but also extraordinarily effective. The process of training a specialist is not only about instilling knowledge but also about teaching by example, passing on an attitude toward work. I'll never forget one incident. I was writing a thesis on neurophysiology, an experimental science. We were studying brain tissue and had purchased and prepared hundreds of laboratory animals. During the experiment, it was necessary to drip a substance into a thousand test tubes from a pipette every ten and a half minutes like a metronome drip, drip, drip. There was a publication deadline, and both my future and that of my supervisor depended on meeting it. I was twenty-two, and she was thirty. By today's standards, just a girl, but in these test tubes, she was preparing her doctoral dissertation. Six months of work. Suddenly, she glanced at the wall and said, A fly. And stopped the process. Somehow, a fly had gotten into the laboratory, and it could have landed in any one of the thousand test tubes, contaminating them. Or it might not have. But there was no way to check. We threw everything away and started over. Of course, she could have ignored the fly and continued the experiment. But could she then be called a true scientist? This situation happens not only in science. Every profession involves a certain moral choice, and teachers pass on to students not only knowledge but also an unspoken ethical code. Our teachers also received their knowledge from someone. It's a very long chain. At some point, they too were driven by the desire to instill their essence into their students. Why? Because what remains of you is only what you give away. But not every master can be a teacher. A teacher is someone who not only knows but is ready to share their knowledge. Not out of self-interest, but because they have an inner need to do so. They will share everything they have, and then pass the student on to another master. Parents create the body, teachers the soul. A teacher who can instill in their students the ability to find joy in labor should be crowned with laurels. Albert Hubbard We seek a teacher every time we feel the need to accelerate our development, find our place in life, or achieve a certain goal. Finding one is a great happiness. An even greater happiness is finding a place where these teachers have gathered together, 
cooking the broth. Since the Middle Ages, they have united in universities and schools, for genius cannot grow in a vacuum, and cannot be learned from books alone. By the time books are written and printed, science has already moved far ahead. The knowledge that students acquire in their first year will have to be completely changed by their fourth. And there is only one way not to fall behind by constantly learning from true masters. This is why building technology parks without connecting them to universities is to ignore the principle of concentrated broth. All the world's religions agree that without a teacher, an experienced mentor, it is impossible to find the path of wisdom. A person with an ordinary level of consciousness can never grasp the essence of things that exist on higher levels of the spiritual path. Only by striving for spirituality and a meaningful way of life does consciousness develop, ascending toward the light of spiritual teachers and opening the heart to their teachings and the knowledge they provide to each of us. Teachers are our guides on the earthly path. In Christian communities, the role of mentor and teacher has been and still is fulfilled by spiritual guides, who take on the responsibility of spiritual leadership on the path to salvation. The primary duty of a spiritual guide is pastoral care for the congregation and the monastic brotherhood, ensuring their spiritual well-being. If the teacher eats standing, the students eat on the go. The teacher, the way he thinks, is the most important thing in any teaching or education. Adolf Diesterweg The term Pi Nu Epsilon Upsilon Mu Alpha Tau Iota Kappa Pi Alpha Tau Rho Spiritualis Pater, Spiritual Father, begins to be used primarily in monastic writings by ascetic authors from around the 4th century. The history of the first Christian community, made up mostly of the apostles, illustrates the importance of teaching. Philip ran up and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Acts 8 30 31 Islam also demands that a person directs all their efforts toward acquiring knowledge. This will cure them of the diseases of the heart, pride, envy, hatred, cowardice, self-satisfaction, deceit, ingratitude, and other base qualities of the soul that block the path to paradise. The student must carefully choose their teacher. The chosen mentor should not only be a righteous and God-fearing person with correct belief but also live in accordance with the teachings they impart. However, the student should not rely solely on their teacher for salvation, as the first teacher for a Muslim is always Allah. Therefore, when stepping onto the path of knowledge, the student should ask Allah, My Lord, increase me in knowledge. Quran 20 114 The famous Tibetan Lama, O. L. E. Nidal, a Danish man and the founder of over 600 Diamond Way Buddhist centers worldwide, wrote, a teacher is useful to the extent that he draws people's attention to their own beauty. If he can awaken them and they don't become dependent on him, then he is very good. Naturally, he has no right to say, I am the source of your happiness, now please buy me a few Rolls Royces. Instead, he should say, all the wealth you are now experiencing is your own. If it were not within you, how could you experience it? Now bring it into the world and show what you've learned. If the students then return, you check how everything went and show them where to go next. This way, a person receives the deepest connection of all shared growth. With each meeting, we grow a little and learn something new. A teacher's diligence can be seen in the independence of his students. His power is reflected in their ability to be strong. Judging a teacher by their student In Kabbalah, the role of the teacher in a person's life is considered extremely important, as described in the Encyclopedia of the World of Kabbalah. In Kabbalah, the teacher is a higher level, 
through which knowledge, feelings and attributes come to us. Everything that is in you comes to us through this higher level called the teacher. This connection in Kabbalah is unchanging, and if you reject it, you lose the possibility of spiritual elevation. World civilization in all its manifestations has been created through the continuous tradition of passing down knowledge, experience and skills from generation to generation. The role of the teacher, the one who imparts this knowledge and experience, is immense. In all ethical teachings, respect and reverence for teachers are acknowledged. One of those who expanded the concept of the teacher to include mentorship and moral guidance was Confucius. In his work Analects, which is mandatory for memorization in China, Confucius formulated the ideal of holistic, harmonious personal development, characterized by qualities such as nobility, generosity, respect, pursuit of truth, honesty, and constant self-improvement. In 523 BC, Confucius established the world's first private school focused on the cultivation of human character, where up to 3,000 students were educated. The teaching methodology was built on dialogues between the teacher and students, with an individualized approach applied to each. Confucius gave great importance to moral principles. In his reflections with students, Confucius said, to learn and not to think is a waste of time, while thinking without learning is dangerous, learning must be pursued without satiation. One of the first, Confucius highlighted key pedagogical principles. Respect tradition. A noble person instructs but does not drag, encourages but does not force, opens the way but does not lead to the end. If you study alone, your horizon will be limited, and your knowledge will be scant. The teacher and the student grow together. True literacy is not just reading but understanding and reasoning. Good teachers create good students. M. V. Ostrogradsky A tree and a teacher are known by their fruit. Confucius considered education and the moral perfection of the individual to be the most important factors in human existence and well-being. There are many examples of the influence a teacher can have on their students, even in Roman history. The twelve-year-old heir to the empire, Nero, was assigned the best philosopher, Lucius Annius Seneca, as his teacher. Seneca's influence on Nero was enormous. For four years, he instilled in his pupil respect for law and order. Seneca dreamed of raising a ruler who would embody his ethical ideals, and it seemed that his hopes were gradually coming true. Nero proved to be a diligent student, and at the age of 16, when he ascended the throne, he indeed began to rule under Seneca's guidance, following the ethical principles of his teacher. The first years of Nero's reign are considered some of the best and happiest in the history of world civilization. However, the student did not maintain his gratitude for long. As Nero saw himself as a great actor and increasingly resembled his despotic predecessors, he forgot all of the philosopher's teachings, dismissed Seneca from office, and soon after ordered him to commit suicide. Seneca's death was merely a prelude to Nero's own disgraceful and tragic end. Betrayal of a teacher ultimately cost Nero his life. The law states, having found a teacher, follow their teachings, value them, and never betray them. Teach others, and you will learn yourself. One cannot be a teacher without first being a student. Teach others, and you will learn yourself. It is impossible to be a teacher without continuing to be a student. Why is the presence of a mentor and teacher so important to us? It turns out that the environment, especially social interactions and communication with peers, significantly influences the development of our brain. In neurobiology, a substantial amount of evidence has accumulated regarding the impact of early life experiences on the later morphological, physiological and biochemical development of the brain. 
Darwin, in his observations of animals, noted that a rabbit raised in isolation has a smaller brain than its wild counterpart living in nature. The scientist believed that, in the first case, this was due to the objects being raised in limited environmental conditions. Canadian physiologist and neuropsychologist D. Hebb, conducting systematic studies on rats, concluded that early experiences of perceiving the environment have a positive impact on the subsequent behavior of the animal, particularly on the development of the ability to solve situational test problems. The richer and more complex the environment surrounding the animal, the higher this ability. In the works of American neurophysiologist V. Denenberg, it was shown that rats subjected to early domestication, compared to control rats, exhibit greater mobility and lower emotionality. They are less fearful, show more exploratory activity, and have a better capacity for learning, as evidenced by the accelerated development of conditioned reflexes. Experienced rats also have increased resistance to food and water deprivation and the effects of toxic substances, handling stressful situations better. These effects are relatively long-term in nature and can last for over a year in certain groups of animals. The experiments were repeated 16 times with the same results. For the student luck, for the teacher joy. The notebook is a mirror of both student and teacher. The same laws apply in human society. A newborn child's brain is about four times smaller than that of an adult. The size of brain neurons increases, and the nature of neural connections and networks becomes more complex as the child grows, communicates with people, and interacts with objects in the outside world. While the basic plan for the development and structural differentiation of the nervous system is undoubtedly determined by genes, individual experience makes its own adjustments. Some psychological studies suggest that a stimulating environment can not only contribute to intellectual development but also compensate for physiological damage caused in early life. In one such study, scientists observed all children born on the island of Kauai, Hawaii, in 1955, from birth until the age of 10. The researchers concluded that children whose psychological abnormalities were linked to poor living conditions were 10 times more common than those whose issues could have resulted from problematic births. A similar extensive study conducted in the UK yielded the same results, among 7-year-old children born prematurely but living in privileged conditions. There were almost no developmental delays, while among their peers born with the same low birth weight but living in poor conditions, there was a clear excess of mentally retarded and underdeveloped children. Modern psychology also analyzes the concept of a teacher and their current goals. There is a theory that teaching is unnecessary if there is no reciprocal desire to learn. The study of teaching movement claims that teaching increases the likelihood of learning but is not sufficient for its realization. A teacher provides opportunities for learning, but they cannot guarantee it. School is a workshop where the minds of the younger generation are shaped, we must hold it firmly in our hands if we do not want to lose the future. A. Barbus Honor your teacher as you honor your parent. What are the key drivers of learning? According to psychologists, several factors are crucial, the student's engagement, cooperation with the teacher, and the will and responsibility of both parties. Moreover, the clearer the goals, the easier it is for the teacher to understand which tools will help the student achieve them. A teacher played a significant role in the development of Leonardo da Vinci as an artist. Born in Florence to a country notary's family, Leonardo's father decided to send his son to the city to learn a trade. He placed him in the art workshop, Bottega, of the famous Andrea del Verrocchio, an acclaimed master known throughout Italy for his numerous masterpieces. Learning in the Bottega took many years, and to create art at the same level as the master, 
the apprentice had to first learn all the intricacies of the craft. One day, when Andrea was painting a depiction of St. John baptizing Christ on wood, Leonardo painted an angel holding the garments, and though he was still a young boy, his angel turned out far better than Verrocchio's figures. This event prompted Andrea never to touch paints again, as he felt offended that a boy had surpassed him in skill. On the one hand, the entire Bottega witnessed the manifestation of a true genius. On the other hand, Leonardo's painting skills were acquired thanks to Verrocchio, as the master had properly trained his hand, taught him to observe nature, and provided lessons in style and refined technical skills. After this, the paths of teacher and student diverged. Verrocchio went on to work in bronze sculpture and created his final masterpiece the equestrian statue of Condottiere Colliani which can still be seen in Venice today. As for Leonardo, he embarked on his illustrious path to greatness in the world of art. From the teacher comes knowledge. A pile of books cannot replace a good teacher. After bread, the most important thing for a people is a school. J. Danton Plato's closest student, Aristotle, placed the teacher on the highest pedestal in society. Educators deserve more respect than parents, for the latter give us only life, while the former give us a worthy life. When choosing a teacher, we should not rely solely on eloquent speeches. A person is defined by their actions. Why sign up for training if we do not know how successful the trainer is in the subject they teach? There is another way to find your teacher, change your usual routines. Try something new, talk to previously unknown people until you find yourself in the company of those who have already achieved something, whose eyes are bright. After all, at the currently popular training sessions, the opposite often happens, we find ourselves in the company of unsettled people fixated on their failures. Why do we need that? We need not a swamp but a creative atmosphere capable of transmitting the necessary knowledge and energy through example and support. A key point, the teacher will only come when we are ready to perceive them. If that moment has not yet come, we will not even realize that it was them we will neither see nor hear them. One of my teachers, Tibetan Dr. Golden Lenk Hoboev, appeared in my life when I was 19. He did not want to explain anything with words, but after much persuasion, he gave simple instructions, be with me, do what I do, and in twelve years you will feel what I feel. Similarly, a father passes on his understanding of manhood to his son, and a mother teaches her daughter the ability to love and be loved. You don't need to look for a popular guru. Just look around and see the people who have succeeded in the area that interests you. Approach them, absorb their way of thinking, and start emulating their behavior. At this stage, these are your teachers. An ignorant person despises teachers. Wisdom is not in living long, but in learning much.